Have you ever wanted to be handcuffed to a radiator, injected with experimental pharmaceuticals, and emotionally abused so extensively that you suffer a mental breakdown and try to scuttle a nuclear submarine? Oh, don't go out there, Reggie, what are you doing? Well, boy, do I have a game for you. Barrow Trauma is a co-op survival horror game set deep underwater. Alternatively, you can think of it as the fastest way to eviscerate your friendships over the course of about two hours. To this effect, I've recruited three of my friends to quote-unquote enjoy the game. We have the Grim Cleeper, Rar, and Troopin. Our mission? Reach the habitation outpost, which is about 1.5 kilometers away. That doesn't sound too difficult, but the real challenge is to do all of this before Cleeper's psychosis meter reaches is 100%, at which point he tends to inject the entire crew with lethal amounts of opium and kill himself. Yeah, so we're gonna have to, like, lock the morphine cabinet next time, because I think our captain might have an issue. Okay. Reggie, I also injected you with a parasite, so... Interestingly, you won't find any of this documented in Cleeper's video. This is what we call revisionist history, but I digress. Let's begin. I started the mission by appointing myself chief nuclear scientist. This allowed me to operate the nuclear reactor and power our electrical systems. While I was hard at work, my teammates were beginning to question the credentials of our chief medical officer. Officer. I'm, I'm the medical doctor. I don't, I don't trust you. I interrupted them by lighting the nuclear reactor on fire. Some people will tell you this is a bad idea or even unsafe, but those people aren't the chief nuclear scientist and we are not going to listen to them. Unfortunately, my improvisational reactor techniques resulted in a giant fireball which actually traveled through the ceiling and into the cockpit above, burning all of my friends in the process. What? Why oh, this fire? fire? What's it's going on? Honestly, that's just bad ship design. After inhaling five times the recommended dose of fire extinguisher foam, the fire was out, but the damage was done. Why this water? The loss of power caused our captain to plow the submarine into a rock formation, and the now immobilized ship was swarmed by a gang of carnivorous sea monkeys. How charming. Don't worry though, because the immense water pressure crushed us all to death long before the sea monkeys ever had the chance. In case you're wondering what this would feel like, let me walk you through it. Let's approximate the water pressure to be about 15,000 psi. This is a lot, but entirely possible. Now imagine a 300-pound woman sitting on you. Now imagine 50 300-pound women sitting on you. Now imagine those 50 women sitting on every square inch of your body. That, my friends, is Barrow Trauma. On to Mission 2. Following my exceptional performance in Mission 1, my team members decided to promote me from nuclear scientist to security officer. Right, Excellent I, uh, work. I think Reggie shouldn't be the engineer. <laughs> yes. So this gives me an opportunity to be the security officer now. <laughs> Some people might view this as a downgrade, but I now spawn with a bowie knife and a pair of handcuffs, and I'm deciding to take this job very seriously. Uh, Even better, listen, if you thought <laughs> if you thought fascism was bad, just wait until you see what I do as the security uh, oh, officer. Oh boy. The mission began with me receiving a security briefing from the captain. Reggie, 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 come here. So, I, I, think, I think on this sub, I think we have a traitor. I'm just, I'm just saying. This gave me an excellent excuse to demand access to my crew member's genitals. You think we have a traitor? Okay, well, I'm going to find him, but the first thing I have to do is walk around and do a uh, mandatory penis inspection, and you're first. Uh, well, well, I, I think my penis is quite large enough. Cleeper's the traitor, he has a micro penis. <laughs> I felt very confident in my assessment of Cleeper as a micro penis traitor, but it would be negligent for me not to investigate the other crew members as well. First up was Rar. I need you to do drugs in front of me to prove your loyalty to the submarine. Rar responded by forcibly injecting the drugs into Cleeper and sprinting down a dark hallway. What did you just put on me? It's no good. This tells me nothing. The only person I actually felt good about was Troopin. Wow, Troopin, I'm very impressed with how you've learned from me and you've uh, you've adopted my, my nuclear reactor technique. Yeah, I just looked what you are doing and did the opposite. My investigation was briefly interrupted by a sea squid assault, but that's nothing a little 50 caliber BMG can't fix. Unfortunately, we sustained some damage in this battle, but thanks to my innovative water draining techniques, we were able to stabilize our situation. Yeah, how do we uh, how do we drain the water? You need, you need a bucket. A bucket? <laughs> a bucket. <laughs> a bucket's gonna do right. it. It was around this time the moral fabric of our micro society had not only deteriorated, but it had gone up in flames like a hot air balloon covered in nitro glycerin. Why? Because our new scientist had established an interspecies relationship with a dead animal. Oh. Oh, hi. I think he came with me. Oh, is he your friend now? Yes. 
I considered this vaguely suspicious. At this point, the traitor could be anyone, and there's only one way to find out the truth. A wise man once told me, you can identify your friends by how people treat you when you can't fight back, which was all the rationalization I needed for the following. Reggie, be prepared to deploy the handcuffs. I think one of our crew members is, uh... I've handcuffed myself. <laughs> <laughs> Don't take it off. Don't take... <laughs> Let him suffer. Now defenseless, I would lie and wait until the traitor revealed himself to me. And I didn't have to wait long. Hey Reggie, come here. I think I can help you out. Because within seconds, the entire crew began not only beating me, but injecting me with the complete contents of the medicine cabinet. He's resisting! He pulled out a gun! I swear! This is fucked up. You guys, this is like a CIA mind control program. You guys are just dosing me with drugs and beating me. <laughs> I'm just, I'm running into the wall giving myself oh my. concussions over and over again. It was now clear to me, everyone was the traitor, and I had just authorized myself to use any means necessary to bring them to justice. My personal crusade was, however, stifled when the sub began filling with water and I was still handcuffed. But eventually I managed to free myself with the help of a strange British man. Let me get on, let me get on like a, like a, a lower level. Ugh. Harder. Oh. Oh, I think it oh, worked. Okay, I'm good. Why have you got a knife? Oh, no reason. It is now time to restore order to the submarine. The fix the stupid ass thing now. I've noticed it. I've noticed the theme. Like every time I look outside the ship, we're just going down. Oh my God, what happened? <laughs> After firing a warning shot directly into Cleeper's head, I began immediately trying to sink the sub by opening the airlock and filling our vessel with 10,000 liters of water. Oh, don't go up there, Reggie, what are you doing? This resulted in confusion. How do I heal you? I don't know. What do I do? I need, I need help. And a moderate amount of turbulence. Okay, uh, oh. No! Oh, fuck. Happened again. Unfortunately, my plan was cut short due to my extensive list of medical conditions that I had accumulated. At any given time, I was suffering simultaneously from blunt force trauma, opiate withdrawal, severe concussion, gunshot wound, active bleeding, low oxygen, hallucinations, and a parasitic infection. Oh, and Cleeper also took a bunch bunch of drugs, shot me in the face, and attempted to hide the evidence by releasing my body into the ocean. I need- I need morphine. I need morphine so bad. <laughs> I got it. I got it. I just took it. Okay, I'm feeling great. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good. Reggie? This was an expertly executed plan on his part, except for when he somersaulted feet first into the submarine's active propeller and killed himself. What? What? Oh god! Oh god, I just walked into the propeller! Guys, I'm not feeling so hot. Somehow without Cleeper and I, things actually got worse. Troopin and Rar smashed the submarine into an active volcano, starred in their own adult film, and then swam headfirst into oblivion. And that was the end of mission two. Regrettably, I failed in my quest to punish the traitors, but I won't be making the same mistakes next time. But before that, I'd like to take a small break to speak candidly with my audience. Due to the nature of my content, certain advertisers don't want to associate with me. I'm working very hard to figure out exactly why that is, but for the time being, it has made my content more difficult to monetize. Fortunately, I've been able to acquire unidentified powders from a strange internet man. They're very tasty, and they give me all the energy I need to edit videos until I involuntarily lose consciousness. If you'd like to support the channel and try these products, click the link in the description for some free samples, and after that, you can use code REGGIE for 10% off future purchases. I will get money, and you will get a caffeine addiction. Rub it on your skin. Put it in your mouth and even swallow it. Thank you Gamersups for this partnership, now let's continue the video. I started the mission by trying to lay low. Deep within, I had a burning desire for retribution, but I couldn't let the others find out. So I created a three-step plan that would allow me to masquerade as a normal human being and gain their trust. You might think this comes dangerously close to manipulation or even subterfuge. However, I subscribe to the immensely utilitarian philosophy of Eddie Guerrero, which is to say that not only is lying cheating, and stealing an acceptable option, it's the necessary option. But I digress. Step one of my plan. Ingratiate yourself with others by throwing military-grade flares at their head. Do you guys want flares? I have lots of what? flares. No. Why you- You're welcome, and now it's also more festive. Don't worry, Troopin. Just, just, just pile the shit. I'll protect you. Step two. Engage in passive-aggressive dialogue with crew members. <laughs> Wait, are we sinking? Yeah, it's a sub. And finally, step three. Physically assault Rar with a wrench and then claim it was an accident. This will make me seem relatable. I think the engine's broken, no. but I ain't got a wrench to fix it. Oh, I, I can help you. You want a wrench? This is, this is gonna play out like a porno. 
Oh, oh sorry, I just oh smacked you. I apologize. It's a, it's a very. Do you want? <laughs> Look, I need some special material because it's been a while. Unfortunately, this last part resulted in Ryer accidentally saying Cleeper's activation phrase, which caused him to go into immediate opioid withdrawals. Do you need my help or not? No, no, I've, I've got it. You, you can get out of it, buddy. Are you sure? I actually need some morphine, man. the fentanyl i need fentanyl no you don't it's been three minutes you don't need fentanyl There's i need it i need it fortunately i managed to calm the situation down by sharing some humorous anecdotes one time i went to Cleeper and i, I asked him if he could help me uh, with a math problem and he, he pinned me down and injected me with strange chemicals well one time i asked reggie for a mechanical problem and he beat me with a wrench well <laughs> Did it fix it? Is it fixed? <laughs> With Cleeper's drug frenzy avoided and trust levels now at an all-time high, I could begin collecting information on how to best sink the submarine and exact my vengeance on these traitorous rascals, which is when Cleeper said this. Oh, why can I rewire the nuclear fucking <laughs> 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 Dear God, if there was one thing not to do, it would be that. So obviously, I had to do it. Using only a screwdriver, I could rewire any electronics in the submarine. I could lock doors, turn off the water pump, and even rewire the nuclear reactor to the toaster oven, inevitably resulting in thermonuclear Armageddon the next time someone makes a bagel. Given this, I snuck my way into the nuclear reactor room to inspect the wiring and determine how to best sabotage it. I was, however, interrupted when Rara entered the room and began looking at me suspiciously. Fortunately, I was able to defuse the situation by engaging him in a quasi I homosexual relationship. Easy. Hey, what's up, buddy? Uh, yeah, we're good. Good, good. Just an engineer and a mechanic just chilling out, you know? Totally heterosexually. 13 engineers. Yeah, hey, can we touch wrenches? Oh, Ram Ranch. God. oh, yeah. Hey. Uh, this, what, 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 what's wrong? this is true, romance. Yes. Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Four, four. Actually, I think well, we were just touching fine. wrenches, man. You said. You should get tested. That was a close call, but I managed to gather all the necessary information to execute my plan. All I needed now was a suitable distraction, and as if God himself had heard my prayers, we were almost immediately attacked by a swarm of hyper-aggressive tadpoles. Okay. Um. Jesus Christ! The serendipitous timing of this divine blessing had excited me so extremely that I nearly entered an erection-induced coma on the spot, but I resisted the urge and pressed on in my campaign of justice. While my crewmates were busy welding the ship back together, I pretended to be repairing the nuclear reactor, but in reality, I was reconnecting the power output to the nuclear meltdown alarm. Not only would this turn off all the power in the sub, but whenever someone would try to turn it back on, it would instantly trigger a very intimidating meltdown warning, which would hopefully scare them off. This was very confusing for our nuclear scientist. Uh, I try now. Ow, oh god, uh oh, Ooh, meltdown. And it only got worse when the rest of the crew, frustrated by the lack of power, began bullying Rar for his inability to perform basic nuclear fission. We have no power. Okay, what? Why we don't have the power? Yeah, Rar, you foolish bastard. Why don't you fix the reactor? Yeah, I don't know why this isn't working. While that was going on, I darted around the submarine, erratically rewiring every door, hatch, and junction box I could find. However, with the crew becoming increasingly suspicious, it was time for me to make my escape. I collected a diving suit and began creeping my way towards the exit, and just in time, because they were beginning to realize what was going on. Uh, it's only fucking up the connection. Or... Oh, well, it says the output is high. Someone, yeah, there's no, someone put the fucking electric, someone's messed with the electrics. Oh god, Reggie? <laughs> Reggie? Someone's supposed to be rewiring the fucking- Reggie, where are you? I got a very special dosage of medication. I attempted to escape, but unfortunately, I forgot that I rewired the escape hatch to be impossible to open. This was a miscalculation on my part. I attempted to break my way through it, but eventually the Grim Cleeper was upon me. <laughs> I need out of this place, please. <laughs> no, please. stop! Ow! He attempted to de-escalate the situation, but all discourse turned necessarily violent when I found out he had infected me with space herpes. Look, Reggie, Reggie, we can work this out, okay? You gave we me can herpes. Work this out. I didn't give you herpes. I didn't give you herpes, you <laughs> son of a bitch. Eventually, I managed to exit the sub, at which point I equipped a handheld sea scooter and made my escape. See you later, losers. Fleeing from the tyranny of the traitor legion was a good start, but I felt as though I had a duty to protect humanity from these anomalous and dangerous individuals, which is why I began swimming around the submarine and destroying it with a plasma cutter. Uh, <laughs>
I think we're all good. Fantastic. Oh my fucking god, there's a hole here. Someone's using a plasma cut. Who the fuck is that? Why did he go? Unfortunately, my diving suit wasn't rated for these pressures, so I would black out roughly every 30 seconds. But my fiery devotion to justice always returned me to consciousness. I managed to make five large scale incisions into the submarine, at which point my crew members became visibly upset and decided to send Rar outside to kill me. Uh, we need to get this water out and Reggie shot. Where was the guns? In response, I snuck back onto the submarine thus leaving Rar to search the vast expanse of the abyss aimlessly. I kept myself busy by systematically dismantling uh -oh. everything in the pump room, but eventually the combination of my uncontrollable laughter and uncreative hints allowed my former crewmates to locate and shoot me about 47 times. Where you at, Reggie? I could be anywhere, bro. I could even- I could even be inside the submarine right now! Oh, there he is! <laughs> As all of my internal fluids quickly became external fluids, I only hoped and prayed that I had done enough to save society from these treacherous psychopaths. Immediately following my death, the crew began trying to harvest my organs for some kind of satanic ritual, no doubt. However, the good news was that my heroic last stand inflicted such irreparable physical and psychological damage that it caused the remaining crew to mutiny against itself. Kleeper finally hit peak psychosis when he attempted to throw the last remaining fuel rods into the Abyss. Uh, I don't want you to, to be mad, um, but I'm about to drop the last uranium rod uh, off into the abyss. So. And when Troopin tried to stop him, they entered a life or death struggle to determine ownership over Troopin's last oxygen tank. It's not personal. It's oh me or God. you. I need the oxygen tanks. <laughs> no. Stuff. Eventually, Kleeper managed to bludgeon Troopin into unconsciousness, and in one final transgression against the very concept of morality, he unequipped Troopin's diving suit, thereby allowing him to be crushed to death by the tremendous water pressure. So there you go. You don't need that diving suit, right? No, 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 not this one. I think I am not okay. Meanwhile, Rar was busy permanently welding the entrance to the submarine closed in an attempt to isolate himself from the avalanche of violence now barreling in on his position. Unfortunately for him, this didn't stop Kleeper from clawing his way through the door like some kind of feral ghoul. In a last ditch effort, Rar attempted to charge Kleeper with a wrench, but instead had his legs blown off by about four consecutive shotgun blasts. I've got a wrench! Ah, he's got a gun! <laughs> oh, God. In true Kleeper fashion, he then decided to punctuate his string of homicides by unequipping his diving suit and swimming directly into the ocean, inevitably succumbing to none other than barrow trauma. This wasn't the happy ending I had imagined. I didn't ride off into the sunset with my water scooter as the submarine went critical and exploded into a trillion pieces behind me. In fact, I spent most of the game bleeding, losing consciousness, and having space herpes. But in the end, we stopped the traitors, and I can finally rest easy knowing that the sun will soon rise again on a grateful world. I want to thank Rar, Troopin, and Kleeper for getting together to work on this. Additionally, big shout out to this month's patrons, and finally, thank you for watching. I can't believe I'm starting a channel with two Seth plays. <laughs> yes. Hey, wait, wait, wait. Let's do a Seth off, and then uh, you guys judge who has the better Seth. Hey, hey, people. Seth here. Yeah, that was great. You're not participating? No. What do I gotta do? Hey, hey, Seth people. <laughs> you <laughs> fucked it up already. You <laughs> fucked it up already.